What's up guys, Grim here. Huge, huge patch today. If you guys have not seen the patch notes, then you are completely missing out on everything that's really cool. So let me go ahead and go over a lot of the things. Let's just say that the new souls are out. Also, big PvP changes for people like me that have been waiting for PvP to change. I've been fussing and complaining and you know making videos about how bad pvp was right now basically the time to kill was way too low i mean it, it just made it to where you walk up blow somebody up and it was all over with i mean pvp took no skill at all if you go back and look at my uh storm legion videos back whenever i was pvp and i was very very dominant at the time because it took a lot of skill in order to pvp you well let me just say that it allowed skill to happen. Okay, so uh, if somebody started damaging you, you had to where you could re retaliate. You could interrupt them. You could get away. You could do whatever. You know, you could try to do different things in order to capitalize on the situation that you were presented with. Whereas PvP these days is so like no retaliation no reaction time at all is allowed because a pyromancer can come up and nuke you bam you're dead and there's no retaliation you can't think okay i'm taking a lot of damage from this guy off to the side that i didn't see right off the bat now i'm i'm seeing my health bar going down what am i going to do well you didn't have time to react and uh, ever since nightmare tide came out it's been that way uh range classes are just really just nuking down everybody and a lot of changes just happened so let's go ahead and go over a lot of the patch notes there are so many things to go over uh first off we're going to talk about the uh the new souls real fast now i don't know a lot about them other than what has been said in the live streams and stuff i haven't played them myself i'll go ahead and uh get the soul pack and review a lot of them for you guys uh, but, uh, right now I'm just looking at it at face value. You guys may know a little bit more than I do, but as you can see, the frost keeper is the mage new soul and it's the single target healer. It seems to be really, really cool. I mean, by all the live stream footage that I've seen, it has a lot of shielding in it. It has, uh, good heals, all that stuff. I mean, mage is just shining more and more these days forever mage was like the worst class in uh in rift and i mean it may have been better back in the old days or something like that but ever since i've been playing which has been over two years now mage has been the absolute worst and now i firmly believe that it's the absolute best whenever it comes to pvp pyromancer is just absolutely ridiculous in blowing up people in uh pvp and as most of you know that pvp a lot it's pretty much all about burst it's about bursting somebody down before the healers have time to react and heal that person up and uh, or else if you chop them down a little bit and get them to about you know 60 65 percent health or something then using your burst and boom blow them up before the healer goes oh no he's in trouble kind of thing so pyromancer really did that and then you had harbinger that was the melee spec and if you're in melee and you're able to do melee combat for the most part as in you're not running into a whole bunch of range class people if you do that you're just going to get nuked down and there you shouldn't be running melee for the most part if you can help it but if you're in a melee situation say you're off on the wing of uh, a Carthen Ridge or something like that and you end up one-on-one -on -one in somebody it's it's a lot about burst but it's a lot about survivability at that point and Harbinger really was able to do good damage uh, had methods of escape, had uh, just lots of things going for it, and it's pretty much the best dueling class overall. So, um, you know, or spec, should I say. So, whenever you come to like how good Harbinger is in melee situations, it was amazingly good. So, overall, the class is just really, really excellent to play in PvP. So, this Frostkeeper class looks like it's just going to be another feather in the cap of the Mage class. It's really really good uh i've been really gearing out my mage and this i mean i would love to play a frost keeper uh i'm probably not going to have the exact gear that's needed for healing so i may not be the best healer but it should be fun to swap things up and play healer whenever uh, our team is low in healers all right so then you have the maelstrom 
Primalist, which is the range single target DPS spec for uh, Primalist. Now, it's uh, you might think that they already have Vulcanist, but Vulcanist is... Um, it, it's, it's more like just huge burst with the ethereal beam it's got the molten waves and stuff like that uh but with the maelstrom it seems to be a lot of cast time abilities and it has stuff like where it puts a dot on somebody and that dot doubles in damage every single tick so it ends up being quite a bit of damage how good that's going to be in pvp i'm not real sure i haven't played it uh in pvp i haven't played it at all actually but uh the people that have tested it out say that they think it's really good good other people say the cast times is what's going to kill it in pvp uh a lot of people argue with me on this but it is completely i mean i i firmly believe i am right in that you want to have the least amount of cast time things in pvp as possible because movement is so superior in pvp nowadays it's not that great because movement you know you can line a site and do all that stuff and it does uh help but with the time to kill being so low, you don't have much time for movement. So, you know, I mean, actually, uh, all these instant abilities and being able to run and hide and stuff like that, a lot of times it just doesn't work these days. Uh, but as soon as I talk about the PvP changes, hopefully that will sway some of the, uh, the thoughts on that as well. All right, so then we have the Rune Shaper, which this is the range single target DPS from the uh, Clear class. And this is mainly about putting uh, runes on the grounds and stuff like that. I mean, the way that I'm understanding it is it's uh, it can put a lot of AoEs or heal over times on the ground or buffs or something like that. I mean, it seems to be uh, lots of different things that are ground targeted. I'm not real sure how it plays out. I mean, uh, by the time this video is coming out, some of you guys will already have this uh, soul pack and be playing it. So it'll look completely amateur what I'm saying right now. But um, that's just what the live streams have said. So if you don't have the soul pack on day one and getting to see how to play this, I'm trying to sum it up for you for the most part. Okay, then we have the Shadowborn uh, Rogue, which is a dual target melee DPS. Now, will this actually be played much of a dual class? As in, will you be doing damage to this uh, enemy over here and then switching targets and doing damage here while the first one is still going to be taking your passive damage, so to say, while you're hitting this target? some of the damage is going to be shifted over to that second one or is it going to be just a stacking thing with uh rogues uh take for instance if they put this mark on their target that's the that's the enemy that's going to be taking that secondary damage while you're hitting your primary target whatever has that mark is going to be taking that secondary damage well are you just going to stack that mark onto your current target and be hitting them and also getting that uh single uh, secondary damage uh, i'm not real sure that's the way that it would seem to work out in my mind but then again i haven't played it i don't know exactly how it's going to work um but it seems like that's what people would do more likely so we'll see all right then we have the war chanter warrior and that is the single target healer for the warrior class now this is based on a lot of things like war shouts and all that uh it's you know we d really didn't have much of a single target healing spec on uh warrior so this is going to fill that gap hopefully um some of the things that i seen with it i didn't really like such as you know it had things where it would stand still and do a chant and it would damage all the enemies around or something like that whenever i'm thinking about healing I'm not thinking about doing little damage to everything around me. That doesn't concern me at all. That's not even something that I'd want. Uh, but it, if it turns out to be a really good healing soul that can do that kind of stuff passively, you know, how is extra damage going to be a bad thing? But uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't focus too much on secondary damage. Uh, kind of like a Chloromancer in PvP situations. You know, the healing can be decent with the, uh, with the AoE and stuff like that. But, you know, are you really worried about the damage that you're doing besides the effect that it has on the healing? 
not really. I mean, you're not really focusing on uh, doing this excellent damage other than the fact that it's healing your allies. All right, so also with this, the, the multi-core beta is continuing. So uh, it's been open beta for everybody for a couple weeks, three weeks, something like that, to where everybody can get on and test the multi-core technology. And this is something that Rift has needed for a very long time. Um, they're having reports that uh, people are getting up to a 50% increase in their frame rate, which is awesome. Rift has always been, and I've been very critical of this myself, and that Rift always ran a lot worse than you would think it should. I mean, even newer games that are coming out with, uh, like, uh, the newest graphic engines or something like that, they never seem to run as bad as Rift did with the lag aspect. Well, the multi-core technology is going to help that. Whenever the 64-bit client comes out, that will help it as well. So, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking... Uh, if they continue testing this and refining it, it's going to be something very excellent. Uh, right now, I'm seeing improvements in my gameplay with the uh, multi-core beta testing, but hopefully it will get better and better as it goes along. All right, so another big thing that's out is the Carnival of the Ascended. This is like the yearly thing that Rift does and has lots of fun activities that you can take part in. Now, they always come out with new things such as vanity items, mounts, uh, just lots of different things that you can do with the Carnival of Ascended. Uh, usually, there is some best-in-slot items that come out with it as well, such as maybe a, an essence or a ring or something like that. So it makes it to where you can do all this stuff and not only have a lot of fun that's an addition to what you're normally doing but also you can get great rewards from it and uh, the amount of stuff that you can do during the carnival of ascended is very vast uh, so it's it's kind of hard for me to go over everything that you're going to be able to do because I haven't logged in and seen it myself but carnival of ascended is always good and this is the five-year anniversary so this may be the biggest best one yet we'll see i don't know i can already see there's new minions there's new vanity items uh there's a new instant adventure that you can do uh let's see a uh, new shimmer sand arena daily uh quest um let's see the new uh level 65 story quest line would be very cool um let's see yeah just lots of different things also extra uh, minion adventures that you can do as well as new minions so yeah Cool stuff. All right, so another thing that came out is the daily rewards calendar. This is basically your daily login reward every time that you're in Rift. So it says that you can uh, claim up to 21 rewards every month. So if you miss out on, you know, I don't know, 8 to 12 days or whatever, or 10 days, yeah, 10 days. All right, uh, 8 to 10 days in the month, then you may be all right in getting all of the rewards. Uh, so you have to make sure that you log on at least 21 days of the month in order to claim all the rewards. Now what the rewards are going to be, it kind of gives a uh, generalization, uh, I believe it does. Uh, it says resets at the first of every month, uh, uh, claims region specific. Uh, well, I thought I'd seen a, a summary of it, but I may be wrong. I apologize for that. I thought for sure it was, and then I was like, wait a minute, did it? And then I had to read over it again. So uh, what the rewards are going to be, I don't know. Sorry, I don't have that information. I thought I did, but it turns out I don't. Okay, so uh, that's that's a big thing. That's a, to encourage activity in the game. So even the people that uh, are thinking, well, I don't feel like playing Rift today, blah, blah, blah. They'll maybe log in. And then they'll maybe want to play after they log in. They go, hey, wait a minute, this event is going on. I've been wanting to do that event. And it actually encourages more activity in the game. So this is a very good thing. Now, I'm curious about the rewards. <laughs> All right, so they have it to where uh, Bank Vault extensions are possible now. And I'm sure this is going to be with credits. Uh, this is one of the things that... Uh, is going to be probably a normal trend in how you see Rift updates being. There's going to be uh, more, uh, let's see, convenience things for you to get with credits. Uh, basically more ways to make money in the game, but also making it more convenient for you. So they're making it to where you're having more... Uh, 
slots in your bank vault to where you can store more things is it going to be uh like bag space coming up are you going to be able to buy like the biggest bag in the game for credits possibly i mean there's going to be a lot of things like that that's going to make it convenience wise for you but also going to make money for the game but you don't have to get it so you know whenever they talk about things that you can get if you want it or things that you need to get in order to be competitive people always like it to where it's just if you want it you know they don't they don't like it too much like the earring slots where you know you have to have it pretty much all right so there's more and more things going to come out like that i mean i know that they recently did a poll that talked about uh having bags specific to uh you know maybe uh crafting uh materials having bags specific to uh let's see armor and stuff so that you can uh, place your sets of armor in there and it doesn't take up all of your uh normal bag space uh, if you want to switch from tank gear to a DPS gear to healing gear or something like that, it'll make it to where it's more convenient and uh, probably going to cost you credits if you want those items. Uh, now, it, now, you have to keep in mind, you don't have to have those things. So if you want them, you're probably going to have to pay credits for it. So that's how, that's how a lot of things are going to come up, most likely. I mean, by the polls that they showed and everything else. But hopefully there isn't going to be too many more things that you have to have, like the earring slots. All right, so now we hear, have here something that's got me a little bit excited. Planar Attunement Tier 2 arrives. So this is the, the dual attunement of Planes of Nature, Cinder, Storm, Steam, Dusk, and Dust. Uh, have been expanded to hold a second tier of attunement points. Each tier adds new... Uh, uh, activated abilities including uh, confluences uh, when used together the confluences uh, can unlock a powerful effect named confluence of the planes which will allow an ascended to even cheat death so uh, basically they're adding more things to the planar attunement while also increasing the cap I've been capped out in planar attunement for a very long time and the cap has always been uh, well you know until recent day has been a thousand four hundred and twenty seven and now it's increasing to a thousand seven hundred nine that makes it to where now i'm willing to go out and do a lot of the quests and such that's going to give experience because before i didn't need experience and now i'm going to have more things to get with my planar attunement points so yeah very fun stuff all right so a lot of the things that afterwards are going to be talking about tweaks and all that it's not really going to be like uh real new stuff altogether i don't believe so uh you got general things up here like how they're doing a lot of fixes and stuff like that um like changes to the mentoring uh friends list has been limited 200 people uh, let's see uh just a lot of different things up there um let's see the store and services they've uh changed the prices on uh the storm soul the dream soul pack and the primalist calling packs so a lot of people made comments in my recent video talking uh, whenever i made a comment saying that as the the soul packs are out longer they will probably go down in price and people are going no they'd never go down in price well they just went down in price so uh that's what kind of happens whenever something is out for a while as you can see the storm soul pack is the cheapest because it's been out the longest it is only uh 3, credits now only i mean real life money involved there i shouldn't say only at any time but um also the dream soul pack is 3750 credits and the primalist call pack is 4,500 credits so as new uh, soul packs come out the existing ones will most likely go down all right so let's see here um, yeah more fixes and stuff like that not really anything really big on that part uh, they've done a lot of performance improvements which uh, may, is really good I mean anything to up our FPS and performance in the game is hugely appreciated in rift because rift has always run so bad for some reason you know even people with the best internet connections and computers have struggled to run rift very well they lagged in cq and stuff like that and if you guys watch my pvp videos that i did for tryon i was lagging in big cq moments but i was like i've got to put that footage in 
uh, in a PvP video because people have to see the 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 vast uh, you know the the massiveness that CQ can get with all the people and stuff. And sure enough, I lag in the footage and people criticize me, but that's just how Rift ran. And for them to do improvement uh, performance improvements is hugely hugely appreciated so we'll see how that goes hopefully the game will get better and better all right so they made it to where you can now uh account wide ignore people so uh those that pester you on one character you ignore them and then they log on a different one and pester you again uh that's of course uh now going to be done away with you're going to ignore an entire account uh, which, which will expose some people. If you ignore one person and then all of a sudden you can't hear this person that's always been nice to you, you know that that is somebody that's being pretty two-faced with you. So, uh, I get a lot of those people. Sadly enough, I get a lot of people that are nice to me and then they trash talk me, you know, on, uh, cross events or something like that. And then, you know, now if I decide to ignore somebody, I'll know it's also that person in cross events that's trash talking like uh, like a lot of you guys will see that kind of result with the people that you ignore. All right. So um, let's say UI and uh, settings fixes. Uh, this is a lot of just general fixes for the most part. I read over it. It doesn't really seem too much that's uh, worth mentioning, but it is good fixes. So hopefully it'll all be a good experience overall. All right, and they improved, uh, let's see, new player experience. A new player who's been playing Rift for uh, less than three days will get a sample three days of patron time claimable via the Rift store. Uh, that's most likely going to entice some people to get patron whenever they see all the experience boosts that they get with patron, all the currency boosts and all that stuff. As soon as it's gone in three days, they're going to want some patron time. So what best way to to get an addict going than giving them a sample? So we'll see. <laughs> well, probably a lot of people are going to be subscribed to patron time after that. Uh, when a character which does not have the soul recall ability reaches level 10, the game will grant the character the aforementioned ability. That is huge right there because that's like a flaw in the game right there for all this time because things like soul recall are absolutely needed by all characters. I mean, uh, a lot of them don't have the patron uh, teleports. They don't have the Tempest Bay teleports or any of the other teleports that you get as you play the game longer and longer. And if they missed out on the Soul Recall, they may not know that they can go back and get it. And then they're having to run everywhere that they're going. So automatically giving them that by level 10, that that's absolutely, you know, a huge good thing that they did. Um, let's see, uh, soul changes. All right. So this is a lot of things, uh, to help, uh, combat ability lag all or is a uh, previously ticked every half a second. Now tick every second instead. Uh, of course, bil ability lags or, uh, a big thing in rift because as you put things into macros and stuff like that, the abilities are going to lag more and more with macro lag. Uh, and also uh, auras cause that kind of stuff. I mean, just any kind of things that, uh, you know, really put strain on the resources is going to cause, uh, ability lags. Um, let's see here. You can now unlock up to 40 roll slots. That is a lot of roll slots. I have 10 on my character and, um, on my account. So having 40 of them is crazy crazy man if you have like where you want to go to all these different specs on your character uh yeah that's going to be wild if you want to run every type of uh cleric possible say you have um a defiler uh a pve build a defiler pvp build a sentinel build a inquisitor build for pve a inquisitor pill, uh, build for pvp uh you know uh whatever a raid instance uh this a dungeon instance spec here i mean all the different things a lot of people can come up with a lot of different specs so having up to 40 roll slots may be useful to some people i know i've ran out of roll slots before 
especially whenever I was doing a lot of testing on my warrior before Nightmare Tide. Uh, you know, being the best PvP or I could be was very, very important to me. Uh, so I was always testing out all these new specs, and people send me specs all the time these days. But I really just don't have the heart to test them out because PvP is just such a bad place. Uh, has been. Hopefully it'll change after this patch. But, you know, whenever uh, I go out in PvP and I just, boom, die instantly, uh, it made me where I didn't log into the game as much. Uh, I didn't gear out my characters because not only was I working a lot, but also PvP just was not fun because it was not skill-oriented anymore. Uh, you could have pyromancers blowing people up. You had, you know, just sins coming out and uh, blighted and just, you know, eating you alive before you could even retaliate. Marksmen doing so much damage. I mean, just all these things made PvP very... Uh, not very fun like it was in Storm Legion for me. So, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, being able to do things in PvP where skill will be involved. Uh, whenever you can just nuke somebody down so fast, like Nightmare Tide has been pretty much the entire time, uh, it just wasn't fun to me. So, yeah, uh, being able to actually do those things is going to be a lot better. All right, so they changed a lot of things with a lot of classes. I'm sure a lot of these uh, spec changes are going to be pretty important once uh, you go over them all and certain things will stick out more. Uh, I may not point out exactly everything that is going to be a huge change because uh, with so many different changes in this big patch, it's kind of hard to pinpoint everything that's going to make a big difference. Um, of course, there's lots and lots of chloromancer changes here uh apparently they're making it to where now you will have better single target uh healing with it uh instead of just uh basically uh what they made the example on the live stream was that a lot of times you don't have a target right in front of you but uh, to hit but yet you need to heal your allies and there was pretty much nothing you could do in order to heal your allies except for really crappy s small heals. You know, so now they're apparently changing that. I'm sure that's uh, mentioned quite a bit. Well, uh, one of the changes in all this Chloromancer changes, there's lots of Warlock changes. They made it to where Flicker with Pyromancer is now on a 30 second cooldown, which is really, really good. I mean, uh... Uh, ranged has just been king for so long so to knock that down a notch is a good thing even if i am playing pyromancer now um let's see uh bound, uh, bound on uh preserver has been increased to 30 seconds as well so uh nice stuff nice stuff uh let's see here what else can we go over um uh, like take for instance i mean all these getaway abilities here is just it's all having nerfs done to it which is good which is good i mean because melee stood pretty much no chance against all these range classes and for them to make tweaks like this is a very good thing such as marksman on the double that increase their run speed now has their cooldown increased to 40 seconds uh retreat which was their leap back cooldown increased to 40 seconds so yeah lots of good things um apparently the damage on uh ranger is now increased so ranger may be more viable now uh i know in pvp you pretty much got laughed at if you played ranger over uh marksman because marksman got such a huge buff that ranger was decent before but once Marksman got buffed up, it, you know, if you wasn't running Marksman instead of Ranger, you kind of got made fun of. And now Ranger may be uh, more of a uh, formidable, formidable fo foe. Man, I can't talk right now. Mouth is getting dry. Lots of talking. All right, so uh, let's see here. Guardian phase no longer incorrectly uh, reduced the healing of the planar variation mastery. Okay, that seems more like more of a bug fix there uh let's see here okay uh one of the big things with um paragon here on warrior is that now they made it to where death touch can be cleansed um which is a good thing i mean for it to reduce uh you know the uh stats of somebody so drastically like it did uh it needed to be cleansed however now it's kind of reduced down in potency 
Uh, now death touch makes it to where uh, string dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are decreased by 10% whenever it's uh, cast onto somebody. Uh, instead of strength and dexterity being reduced by 80%. So it's not nearly as potent as it was. And now it can be cleansed. So that makes it, you know, not quite as viable these days. So uh, now, now it's it's available to be used on to like mages and clerics and stuff. But, you know, it's it's 10% now versus what it was 80% before. Um, let's see here. Uh, lots of good stuff. Lots of quests coming up. Lots of different things. Um, fixes to raids. Uh, let's see. Uh, Intrepid uh, Instant Adventures now award more powerful equipment to level 65 characters. So, yeah, Intrepid Instant Adventures are going to uh, give you a lot of a uh, lot more gear. That uh, well, not a lot more, but a lot better gear. All right. So, let's see. Okay, the PvP and War Fronts here. Now, this is what I'm really wanting to talk about for the most part because I'm a PvP guy. Uh, for level 65 PvP, the following adjustments have been made. AOE absorbs and AOE healing has been reduced by 15%. Okay, so uh, yeah, AOE healing has been pretty wild in PvP and absorbs have been wild as well. I mean, just a uh, lot of things have been contributing towards standstills unless you're running like these super burst specs. Uh, if you're running like a Pyromancer, an Inquisitor, uh, a Vulcanist, or something like that, you can get past all this crazy AoE healing and absorbs for the most part. But if you actually played anything other than these super burst specs that everybody's running and just nuking down people, then you had no chance of getting through all this AoE healing and absorbs. Uh, for the most part. Now, uh, of course, there are instances. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the healing has been reduced by 15% as well as the absorbs. Global healing has been reduced by 25%. Another good thing. And an, uh, it's a real good thing because of some of the other stuff that's being mentioned. If you're just talking about knocking down healing altogether... Healers everywhere are going to be uh, upset unless it, it follows up with the other stuff that's going to be coming up here. Uh, range damage have been reduced by 10%. Okay, so now we're getting into the things that have always been needed. As in, range damage has been absolutely insane ever since Nightmare Tide came out. Everything is basically... Uh, you know, a virtual tennis match of just hitting hitting each other back and forth with the ball, you know, kind of thing. And it it's just not not that fun. I mean, I haven't talked to hardly any PvPers that find the current uh, PvP situation all that fun. You either get nuked down instantly or you get in these long standstill battles and it's just not very fun at all. Um... Yeah, uh, hopefully these changes will uh, will uh, in make things better. Okay, so you can no longer uh, join a, a Warfront while flagged as AFK. So there you go. If you get flagged as AFK, you can't join the Warfront and go AFK there as well. All right, so that's some big changes there. Um, let's see here. Uh, they've taken away the 20 hour cooldown in crafting uh, amenders um, lots of other stuff uh, okay uh, lots of achievements here okay so uh, the big thing that really sticks out for me I mean you got the new souls you got lots of good changes to the game overall the performance increases and all that stuff and then of course with me being a PvP guy I am ecstatic that they are making changes to PvP now are these the changes that we need only time will tell. I mean, you know, whenever they were talking about the CQ changes with Conquest, they were talking about how, uh, you know, I mean, everybody was talking about how you basically had a pre-made come in, run over everybody else, and then, you know, it was like the biggest unfair thing ever in Rift. Well, now they've made it to where you can only queue up with five people. What did it do? It killed CQ. There's nobody in Conquest for the most part. It's like whenever you do join CQ, it is the longest strung out thing ever. Uh, I should have turned on my phone. Sorry about that, guys. 
but it's the worst thing ever to join a CQ match now. So the the changes were good intentioned uh, and seemed like something that would work, but it didn't work. So, you know, it's back to the drawing board for the most part. Um, so are these changes are going to be the ones that we need? Who knows? Only time will tell. Uh, but so far, it looks like the things that have really been needed for the most part. I mean, reduction in uh, range damage, it's been needed. We have to make melee more viable. Uh, all of this uh, AOE healing and, uh, you know, just overall healing altogether has got to come down. Um, you know, whenever they took away the tankiness of a lot of souls and stuff like that, it just really killed PvP for the most part. Uh, other than these flash specs. I mean, like, even somebody like me that tries to go in and use, like, my uh, movement and everything that, you know, separates uh, PvP from PvE, you know. PvP is not about just hitting rotations of buttons like PvE is. You know, PvE is about putting out the absolute max DPS and stuff like that, whereas PvP is about, you might not put out that good a DPS, but you got to have your mind focused on movement, line of sighting, marking targets, all the stuff that I preach all the time. And, well, PvP like that hasn't been uh, that good for a while now. It's basically been blowing people up and game over. So, hopefully all these changes make things a lot better. I'm very optimistic of it. I've been very critical of the PvP situation uh, for a long time. I've always said that Trine needed to look at this stuff more. They need, uh, Even if these changes aren't exactly what we need, which they look good to me, but if they're not what we need and it doesn't pan out the way that it needs to, uh, at least they're making changes. At least they're doing something now. You know, ever since Nightmare Tide came out... I, w I have been so frustrated with the state of PvP, you know, because people like me that uh, have always excelled at PvP, all of a sudden anybody can blow us up. There was no, there was no retaliation. There was nothing fun about it. Uh, there was no skill for the most part, I felt. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to punch that like button. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.